made the title Imagination, Creativity, and Innovation. And first thing I'd like to think about is what is the difference? What, is, what are these words and what do they mean to us? So first thing is basically, if you think about it, imagination is really a flight of mind. I mean, you let your mind go and we, we let ourselves think about things that are not necessarily real or uh, practical or anything. We just let it go. So that's the first step. Creativity, if you think about it, is a disciplined imagination. I mean, artists do it, engineers do it, a lot of places you see this thing. And if you think about it, it is really a way of guiding it to a certain, to a certain level, to have a discipline to control and kind of guide it. And then, but if you think about innovation, you have to take one more step. You have to go a little bit farther than that. And it's a question of basically, it's useful creativity. I mean, and useful basically can mean different things in different contexts. So the interest, the, one of the comments I would like to make is that on purpose, basic, on purposeful and undisciplined imagination doesn't always lead to useful innovations. And this is something we need to realize. And, and, and that, would be that would tie in to some of the suggestions or some of the, I guess, strategies. Yeah, the yeah, suggestion was to come up with some, suggest some strategies for being more innovative. And I would like to, I'll do that in a few minutes. But, so that would tie into it. But at the same time, you have to, and also you have to realize that the vast majority of novel ideas do not lead to useful things. So this is something we have to accept, that not everything new is good, not everything good is new. And this is something we need to realize when we embark on that. Now, this may sound very regressive at this point, so, you know, but okay, so let's, let's see where it takes us. So where do good ideas come from? So we have to think about that. And the best way to have a good idea, really, is to have a lot of ideas. I mean, I think this is, if, if I wanted to impart one thing on you, remembering from this, is this, that unless you can generate a lot of ideas, the chances of you coming up with a good one is not very high. I mean, you, you may get lucky. Uh, and the other thing is that, so, but the, in the process, something else happens that's probably even more important than that. It's just not a statistical game of like, you know, roulette and say, okay, well, am I gonna hit the number or not? It's that in the process, you the bits and pieces of those bad ideas can be joined together later and picked and to form a good idea. So sometimes you see an idea, you do something that doesn't work, you think about a way of doing things, and this is not necessarily a technical thing, even in real life. You try something, doesn't work, but you think about it and say, well, that part of it was interesting. Maybe I can use that piece and combine it with another piece of a bad idea and I'll combine them to make a good idea. Now, the other suggestion is that look for things, always have an eye for things and people that surprise you. And not necessarily in a pleasant way. That's important because that's where knowledge comes from. That's where growth comes from. If we are always trying to repeat and reiterate and listen to the thing and to ourselves and the things that reaffirm our own biases, we are bound to be in a very limited bubble. And we have different bubbles depending on which tribes we come from and all those things, but we will remain in that bubble. We need to really think about it beyond. Uh, and this is very important in innovation. Uh, the other thing that I think is very important is not knowing how to do it and not knowing that it can't be done. A lot of times, I mean, the, the visionaries of the field, of the varying fields, and they tell you things cannot be done. Or this is the way to do it. That's not a blessing. It's a curse. We need to really think about what it takes to forget what you've learned. Or use the Yoda's terminology, unlearn what you've learned. Um, now, the other thing that's extremely important in being innovative is the breadth of knowledge, knowing about things that you have absolutely no idea about, going and having the courage about to learn things that are completely out of your comfort zone, not partially, completely. Getting exposure, and when you're doing it, doing it wholeheartedly, immersing yourself fully in it so that you can actually get a sense of how people who do that think and how, what, what does it feel to be in that domain. Um, I think this one is important. It's kind of easy to say and hard to do, and, but I think those things lead to it. Find connections among seemingly unrelated things. Look for things that apparently have no connection to each other, but try to see what's the common theme among them. 
Just can you see things? And I mean really have nothing to do with each other. They, this can be also defined as intelligence, uh, or at least creativity. Find the ability to find connection among seemingly unrelated things. Um, so, I, well, that's an incomplete sentence. Novel ideas are really generated out of the blue. That's what I meant to write. Um, the last one is important, especially if you have kids, but in general, have a lot of free time. Be bored. It's great to be bored. When my kids sometimes, sometimes, sometimes say, I'm bored. You know, they, they've learned the lesson. They won't say it anymore. I said, wonderful. Great. <laughs> said, What's wrong with you? I said, well, a lot of things, but uh, that, that's one thing. Anyway, so innovation killers. Now, there are innovation killers. There are things that kill innovation and creativity. And we need to be aware of them, mindful of those. Being always busy, which ties into being bored. Um, looking for the perfect solution from the beginning. Saying, no, this is not going to work. This is not going to work. This is not going to work. You have to allow yourself some time, and it will get, when to, to get to strategy, some period of time over which you can actually say, you know what? I'm going to humor myself. I'm going to just let this go and see where it leads. Um, being, obviously, being afraid to look bad in front of your peers, right? I mean, just, you have to have thick skin. If you want to change the world, you have to have thick skin. If you want to make an omelet, you will break eggs. There will be people who will get upset. Life is too short to worry about it. If you want to make a difference, go forward. Um, over analysis, I mean, sometimes you just analyze something to death. And, and this, this is not necessarily just for technical things, a lot of things in life. Focusing on your own ideas only, this, is, this happens in a lot of people, not invented here. Sometimes they refer to it as NIH, not the National Institute of Health, no, National Institute of Health that not invented here. Anything that I didn't come up with can't be good. Uh, and the know-it-alls, people who know the answer to everything, you tell them everything just immediately. <laughs> so you're not going to go beyond that. Um, dominating personalities. Uh, you have to be careful if you have one not to dominate other people. You have to leave them room. And if you don't have one, you have to be able to stand up and say, look, you know, this is the idea. Let's, let's think it through. Um, and the other thinking that hey, uh, if this could be done, someone else would have done it already. <laughs> we do this all. Okay, so the, the thinking innovation process and just the creation process can be thought differently. There are different ways to think about it. And this is one way, it, again, more specifically about the way I think about it, in, at least a little bit closer to my field. It may be applicable to other fields, it may not be. I'm just going to share it with you. So there, there are two ways to think about it. There are two trees in my mind. And some of the people who, have work, who work with me know about these two trees. From time to time, I go to the whiteboard and draw them over and over, and they have to listen through it multiple times and tolerate me. But anyway, uh, so there's, there's a top-down tree. You want something to happen. You want to make it something that does something. You want to create an organization that performs a certain thing. You ha you're looking for a certain feature. You're trying to achieve something, right? You can break it down into smaller pieces. You can say, well, for me to make this device, I have to have these five pieces. Or I for, my, for me to have this organization, this company, I need to have these functions. And these functions have sub-functions. And you break it down into this tree, right? It can be a technical thing. It can be a device. It can be an organization. It can be anything. And then there's a bottom-up tree. There is a phenomenon. There's a skill. There's a technique. There's something you can, well, Let's see if the animation right. Oh, there's something you're trying to achieve. Uh, sorry, there's something you can do, not something you can try to achieve. You have a tactic, you have a technique, you have a capability, you have a feature. You observe a physical phenomena, phenomenon and say, look, hey, that's interesting. That's a bug. Say, well, what is, what is, this is, why is it behaving the way it is? And you can ignore it, you can try to suppress it, or you can say, look, all these bugs that I've seen, all these things that didn't work, all the things that, the weird things that we saw along the way, those things that surprised us early on, earlier on, what can I build with it? The story of the guy who takes a button and says, well, I'll take it to the, to the tailor and say, well, make a suit for me, right, with this. So, so this is the thing. So there are all those things that you can grow up, up bottom up. And then the innovation, really, kind of a creativity process involves identifying multiple top-down trees and multiple bottom-up trees and identifying where the interconnects are. And the more of these trees that you have in your mind, the more you can find, say, okay, if I want to make this interesting thing, if I were to make this 
organization. It would be interesting because I can use that piece from here and that piece from that tree that could connect. And then you make these connections and you create paths. And each one of those paths from the top to bottom, a completed path, is a new innovation, if you will. So strategies. I mean, some of them tie into what we said, just like let me summarize them. Get bored. And please do not pick up your smartphone. This is, this is the new addiction. I mean, I, I can see people kind of like, and I do it from time to time. I have to stop myself. Just, I'm thinking here, sir. Put it back. Do not do that if you want to be innovative. Um, this is also interesting. This may be a little bit different from some of the uh, things that were said slightly differently in, in one way or another. But is that avoid looking up the solution. Avoid the invention killer named Google. You go, first thing they do nowadays, kids go, so if you ask them a question, let me Google it. No, you don't Google it. Think about it. Because, so what's the worst thing that's going to happen? If you try to come up with some th solution, this is the next bullet, really, yourself. The worst thing that's going to happen is that you're going to spend some time, you're going to come up with something that somebody else has already done. You're going to reinvent the wheel. Even if you do that, you know exactly how the wheel works. You know much better. You have a better appreciation of how you arrive at the wheel. That's the worst thing. And every so often, your wheel may look a little bit different from other people's wheels. Right? So that's the way to think about it. Don't wait for the perfect solution, the perfect being the enemy of complete or achieved or doing anything. Uh, you have to let go of that picture perfect thing. The process of innovation is as messy, if not messier, than making sauce, as, as making sausages and laws and things of that sort. Um, so again, Cherish people and events and things that surprise you. Don't try to just talk to people that reaffirm you. Try to understand what surprises you. That's where, I mean, even from a mathematical perspective, the information theory perspective, that's where information is. I mean, mathematically, that's the definition of information, things that surprise you. Um, create as many solutions as possible. Generate many things. How do you do that? Look for interesting bits and pieces here and there. Anything that you see, say, oh, okay, that's interesting. It, has not, it may have nothing to do with anything at this point, but it may have something to do with something 20 years down the road. Um, now, this is another interesting strategy. This is the alt. So you need to have period. I think one thing that works, at least from our perspective, is this periodic alt transition between periods where you try to generate ideas without really much constraints. You say, okay, let me just generate a bunch of ideas. You can call it brainstorming, something like that. And then the, the time that you go back and analyze and evaluate and dissect them and say, okay, well, this one is really not good. This is not going to go anywhere. This has this interesting piece, but let's keep it here. This one is interesting, worth pursuing. So this alternate periods. But in the first period, allow people and yourself, for people working with you and yourself to just go and expand. Um, don't, don't be overcritical in the generation phase, and that's very important. You can be critical, in the, and it's important to be critical, in this second phase, but in the first phase, don't, don't be overcritical. So in the, in the spirit of having quotes and gimmicks, so I'm going to give you one here and a couple more. Uh, so this is what Oscar Wilde said. It's actually he's one of my favorite. He is my favorite writer. Um, but, so the imagination imitates. It's the critical spirit that creates. That's important. I mean, it doesn't mean that you just, you, if you go free wheeling, you end up with people who call me. I get like probably once every two or three weeks, I get a call along these lines that pick up the phone. Hello, you're such and such. Yes, I'm such and such. I am interested in a business proposition to start a business proposition with you. Say, great. Uh, we have, we are, have started this company to do, to make a device that um, moves back and forth in time. So, wonderful. Um, how do you plan to do it? So that's where you come in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so that, the critical aspect of it is important. There's another quote that uh, I'm going to give you uh, here, uh, which is basically um, you know, this discussion of courage. And it, it reminded me of that quote. I was not planning to have it here, but I'm going to do it anyway. Is that the difference between, you, you know what the difference between um, courage and stupidity is? What is the difference between courage and stupidity? The end result. So, you know, a lot of this is, has to do with luck. Now, if it's a luck, if luck involves, is involved in this, the only way you can win it, it's a statistical game. It's not chess, it's backgammon or poker or whatever you want to do. So, so you need to play a lot. You need to have a lot of ideas. You need to generate a lot and then be critical about it. So that's it for me. Thank you very much for your attention and enjoy the rest of the day.